Hello world. Welcome back to another episode of Rosary's Room. Today, I hope to not have a super long intro. I will be talking about Blue Water Road, the album that Kehlani just released this past Friday and how much I love it. So kind of spoilers, but I really, really like this album. And if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have made an episode about it. But that's what we're talking about today. So before I get into it, of course, I have my little like rambling moment at the beginning about life. Um, Today, I am recording from my phone because there's electrical issues in my studio. So the sound might be different. Um, Sucks, but that's what it is. Um, In general, life is going well. There was just a solar eclipse this past Saturday. And wow, they say it brings like radical transformation and... um, Uh, (laughs) radical transformation is occurring in my personal life for the good, for the better. Uh, I'm going to hope that that continues. Um, So yeah, I'm generally super happy um, having a really good time. However, um, I do feel tired today and it's raining and I'm working from home and stuff happens. So I felt the need to kind of just like acknowledge if my voice is a little bit different. Um, I I don't know. I don't really have much of an explanation for it other than like life happens. I guess without further ado, that's really it. So let's get into the episode. I want to start off by doing a little overview of Kehlani and why I like her <laughs> or why I like her slash they music, if you know what I mean. So I've been aware of Kehlani for years. I would say I first heard of them in 2016. Um, I had this like brief EDM phase And one of the songs that was in my playlist was this remix of Down For You by Kehlani. And I just remember being like, nice vocals. But I remember at the time going back and listening to the original song and not really being that into it. Um, But it made me aware of her. Also, like, Gangsta, Suicide Squad. And um, the most important thing for me was that Kehlani was featured on the song Feel from Stoney, the album by Post Malone, which I believe came out in 2017. So that was, again, another introduction to Kehlani. Fun fact also, Kehlani was the fall concert at my university freshman year for me. So yes, I did attend Drexel University. This is a fact that I have stated many times on this podcast. But yeah, 2017, Kehlani played our concert and it was really fun. And this was during the Sweet Sexy Savage era, which is an album I don't have much attachment to. But, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that I did get to see Kehlani live and that was really cool. So generally, out of Kehlani's previous projects, my favorite, I would say, is While We Wait. I just like it. <laughs> I don't know, if, like, not much to say. It's just RPG is a good song. Nights Like This is a good song. It doesn't have much thematically going on in the way that it was good until it wasn't does. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, that album is significant for me <laughs> and my character development in my life. It was good until it wasn't. It was easily my top album of the year for 2020. Then I would listen to it a lot. And sadly, I could relate to it a lot. If you don't know, It Was Good Until It Wasn't is an album about toxic relationships. And I guess it kind of was very like sexual. A lot of the songs were very explicitly sexual. And very much so her being like, this is toxic. Literally, the first song is called Toxic. All of this love is toxic. But just kind of <laughs> like letting that be. And the feeling like that the world was ending because she's like looking over the fence with the hose and looking into a fire. So it's this feeling of like, I can't do better or like things just suck. So I'm going to be happy where I am, I guess. Like I haven't really broken down the album that much like to look at it overall thematically and um, aside from realizing that yes that album is about toxic relationships so back then my favorite song was can you blame me because i felt like that was me to a t unfortunately (laughs) but um i've gotten over it you know life happens it's been over two years and um, we grow and we learn from our mistakes and we heal so i previously um was listening to it was good until it wasn't to kind of anticipate this album like oh I haven't like played through the album in a while like let me go listen and then I had this realization like damn this album like does not apply to me anymore like this is not like it used to be really relatable but it's just not anymore because you know bitch went to therapy uh bitch started having boundaries and learning and cutting people off so like (laughs) um cool but now my favorite song from the album is water because why is that so weirdly accurate to my life 
no comment. Okay, so back when It Was Good Until It Wasn't came out, I was still on Twitter. <laughs> if you don't know, I don't use Twitter anymore. Um, but I remember a lot of people kind of just saying the same shit about it. Like, this is grown music. Kehlani's so grown. And like, this is some big girl music. And her pen and her songwriting. Her pen. And I've never heard anybody really say that about songwriting except for Kehlani. And I remember her. Um, Kehlani themselves was just like retweeting all these like tweets about her pen like okay it was just weird to me I found it like what anyway like overall now I just kind of feel neutral about it was good until it wasn't I can acknowledge the significance it has on me as a person um, I can acknowledge that I used to relate to a lot of it but I don't anymore and the music itself was pretty good but like I found myself skipping songs because I'm just like I don't want to be brought back to that place um, unfortunate, but it happens. Like music and art just represent us and our lives and different points in our lives. And maybe you outgrow certain albums, or maybe you don't understand something at first and then you grow into it. You know, that's actually how I felt a lot about a lot of Kehlani's music previously. When I first listened to it, it was good until it wasn't. I actually didn't really like it because I was like, where is the vocal range that I'm used to? It was very like lower, deeper vocals. But then I realized like, oh, it's to <laughs> kind of, um, first of all, pregnancy hormones can deepen your voice. And Kehlani had a child. I think Kehlani had the baby like a year before the album came out. So I don't know. I don't know if that's really relevant. So I at first I didn't really like it because I was like, where is the powerful vocals? But then I came to understand that like, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't necessary for that project, but whatever. Like, but yeah, I feel like I should acknowledge that I kind of have mixed feelings about the whole, like, I guess brand or vibe that Kaylani is associated with as this, like, love and light healing spiritual girl. Because I feel like artists like Kaylani and Janae Aiko get the credit as these, like, spiritual girlies, despite their music being very toxic. Like, not that they're toxic, but their music will just be about toxic things. And looking at the contrast between It Was Good Until It Wasn't and Blue Water Road, it makes me question, like, why was Kehlani associated with this spiritual girly persona for this long when it seems like only now the, like, actual healing stuff is really going on? Like, don't know how else to describe it. And again, I don't know Kehlani personally. None of us know what's really going on in their personal life. We only really know what they decide to share, so... It is what it is, um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that because that's something that influences the way that I listen to this music, you know? It, it's R&B, which I've, I think I've talked about previously on the podcast, um, if I remember correctly, had to have been in my December episode. I'm not entirely sure, but <laughs> if you want, I guess just go listen to my old episodes. Um, me and R&B have a rocky thing of like... I enjoy the music and the sounds of it, but the the concepts of it usually being very sexual, very toxic relationship, very can't get out of it type stuff. It's not something that I want to really associate with at this point in my life because I want to not have that. I, I don't want to have those themes be significant in my life. And I don't want the music to kind of like reiterate certain ideas or behaviors or beliefs um, that are relevant to me. And like, it's, if you want to say it's not that deep, for me, it was that deep. Um, for me, Kehlani's song, Can You Blame Me, was like, I could have written, like, I, okay, <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> I'm not claiming that I could have written that song, but like, word for word, that song described me, which is really sad, if you know what I mean. Um, I mean, sure, like, a little things can be tweaked to just like perspective things, but like, it is that deep for me. And I guess I'll leave that at that. So that just is what it is. So yeah, let's get into Blue Water Road. This album, before it came out, um, Kehlani was very active on social media, posting some stuff about how people were saying this album is very healing girl vibes with the light ocean, beachy, acoustic guitar sounds and like spiritual journey healing. And like, I get it, you know, um, but <laughs> let's guess, um, get into how I feel about it. Um, when this album came out, I listened to it like 10 to 15 times. I loved it. <laughs> so, um, and I think I said this already, like normally it takes me time to get into Kehlani's music. I have to kind of just like listen to it again and again before I can really appreciate it. 
But this one I just kind of instantly connected to and I feel like that's a really good sign and I feel like that might show some longevity because this is something that I kind of don't want to grow out of. You know what I mean? Like I'm okay with growing out of It Was Good Until It Wasn't because that album was about a dark time in our lives. But with Blue Water Road, I kind of have this like weird attachment to it despite only knowing it for a couple days. And Maybe that says something. <laughs> this is like unscripted, but I don't know. Is that a thing spiritually? <laughs> like you just kind of know. Like if some, if you know something works, you have this attachment, it makes you feel good and you can tell like, wow, this is different from what I'm used to. And I like, I'm really enjoying it. Is that a sign or is that just me being like, wow, music about healthy stuff and I'm in a healthy place, so I'm going to eat this up because I've been tired of my old, you know, like I actually removed Can You Blame Me from my likes on Spotify. So that's crazy. That was my number one song of 2020. Um, I think it was still up there in my 2021. And um, now that song is not, I don't even have it liked anymore because I was listening to it and I'm just like, I don't want to be back here. Like, I love the song, but like, I just, I'm not there anymore. So that's interesting. And once again, it is that deep, but let's get into Blue Water Road, which I probably said already. Um, first, I'm going to talk about the singles. What was the lead up to Blue Water Road like? Um, the first song that came out was Alter, and I cried when I heard it because I was just like emotional and like feeling things. But something that happened with a lot of the singles is that I wasn't really regularly listening to them because the album wasn't out, you know, I would listen to it and be like, oh, new Kehlani song, you know, listen to a single like once or twice, but not really have it in my playlists that I started making. And like, I used to not make playlists a lot, but you know, as of last year, I started making playlists to reflect like the season or whatever. Um, I did not have any of these Blue Water Road singles in those playlists, fun fact. So that's kind of interesting. Little story, thought it was cool. Like it seemed interesting, but it seemed like a something that was like a pivotal point in the album so I was like why drop this song so I didn't really feel inclined to listen to it a lot because it's very it just felt like a important point in the album and like out of context it didn't make sense to me until later with the documentary series on Kehlani's YouTube and like understanding like the point of the song which of course I don't really get into the lyrics when I first listen and listen to the sounds and I was like this isn't background music and so far this year, I feel like I've gone for a lot of background music. I've gone for a lot of vibes because I've realized that like when I listen to music, I listen to the sounds first and the meaning later. So certain songs, I love the meaning and that gets played and I have that emotional connection to those, those songs. But I just couldn't do that with Little Story when it was a single because I didn't get the full picture. Um, and then Up At Night came out. Thought it was cool. It sounded cool, but like I wasn't super into it at first. Then again, I, I did feel excited because I was like, okay, this is a little, it's a little bop, you know. It's it's a good song. Is it top five? Probably not for me. I haven't ranked the songs. Um, I don't know if I should do that, but that would be interesting. Once again, apologies if the audio is not great. I changed the location <laughs> and took a break in between. So I'm going to just go through the track list of the album. I do want to point out that generally I tend to listen to the sounds, the music, the instruments, production before I listen to the lyrics. Um, and generally, I just tend to notice sounds more than words when I listen to music. Um, but I went into this album knowing that it's going to be about love and different experiences and like healing and growth and stuff. The first song is Little Story. It begins with these ocean wave sounds, a nice bell, some guitar. I like it. Um, I find myself humming along. So in context, what really matters with this album is the context of the music. Like the songs in sequence with each other, they almost sound like a lot better. You know what I mean? Like hearing the album in the intended story that's given rather than hearing a song one off and trying to fit it into my playlist for this season, you know? So yeah, the song reminds me of Kehlani's song Butterfly from While We Wait in the sense that like it's missing drums and percussion, like not entirely, but there's not a strong beat. So that has me feeling like, okay, like what's going on here? Like where's the drums, you know? But I do really enjoy the psychedelic sounding slide guitar in the background. I think my favorite lyric from the song is working on being softer. Kehlani did release a documentary on YouTube. They're like short episodes about 
where she's at, what's going on in their life, you know? So I like the concept and it made me appreciate the song a lot more hearing that it's about an author, um, someone that she was really into but wasn't able to make it work. So I really like the concept and I can appreciate it more now that I know what the song is about. And I guess this is a theme for me personally with the album because like I said, normally I listen to things with the sound first and the meaning later. But once I understood the meaning of this project, it helped me appreciate it a lot, a lot more. Um, throughout the album, you'll hear a lot of violins and strings, like orchestral, like, but the strings, you know, um, and it reminds me a lot of Rex Orange County, which put out this album, Who Cares, a couple weeks ago. Um, very similar in vibe, I guess. There's lots of strings and the songs are very positive, like love type songs. So um, I find that interesting how that that you know two 2022 albums that i enjoy have those similar vibes so up next is any given sunday it's a nice vibe i like the bell it has like bells filtered drums it's like a clock type of sound and i guess it kind of reminds me of like scissor broken clocks because that song was about working a lot not feeling in control of your time so this one specifically references sunday or time and working. Are you working tonight? Are you working tonight? You know, I don't know if I sang that right, but you know what I mean. Are you working um, is kind of like a main thing of the song. And I like how she sings it. And work is associated with clocks. You clock in, you clock out, you're paid based on your time. Very interesting connection to be made. But yeah, the lyrics are nice. I just touched down in Miami, babe. I really like this song. Um, the feature with Blast, I think it's just okay. Like, I'm not super into it, but I do like how the sound of the voice kind of just, like, adds something different. Um, in general, I like this album for Kehlani, and the features are all right. The, <laughs> I'll talk about it later, but my favorite feature is Sid. Oh, yeah, this is a song where she says, call me daddy in a really low voice, and, like, that's fun. But up next is Shooter Interlude. I first heard this song in the background of the documentary. It was used as just kind of like a... I think it like fades in, fades out. And I thought I wouldn't like it because it starts out with Kehlani coughing. This song actually ended up being one of my favorite songs. I, you know, I like really, I like all of the songs, but this one I just really like. Apparently it's a one take song, which I think is really cool. I can really admire that. I got that just off of Instagram. I think somebody had said like, this song was done in one take. It has nice guitars. The, what is it like? The, the flow of the words, the accents, the... The speech pattern, I don't know how to, what that's called, the flow, I guess, um, is really nice. And there's like a progression of the melody, the chord progression. I really enjoy it. Once again, apologies if my my vibe is like off. <laughs> I'm like, nothing's really wrong. I'm just kind of feeling like, eh, but I know I have to record because I don't want to, you know, I committed to not letting this podcast go. <laughs> so I'm making it work. Also, my throat is a little weird right now. Um, yeah, so, you know, some certain lines like start up my startup, move my maneuver. I just think it sounds good. It makes my brain be like, nice. There's a specific lyric where she says like, okay, well, first of all, the story of the song, it's, I believe, I haven't like really looked into it, but it sounds like it's about saying from the perspective of somebody who was trying to kind of leech off of Kehlani and just say some crazy stuff and then kind of say like, I think you need Jesus. I think you need a shooter. The line like talking about my overstay, my welcome, how do you like, damn, because I that's a phrase that just kind of triggered me a little bit of like, oh, I always felt like I was doing too much, overstaying my welcome, being around people, but it is what it is. I'm glad that that kind of awakened that in me to like recognize that and then um, just kind of not let that have power over me. And there's a sound in the background of the last chorus that sounds like the email sound from Max. So that always has me like looking around like, did I just get an email? I do like the progression of how it starts off as questions. Like, can you start up my startup? Can you move my maneuver? Like questions. And then it becomes the person just demanding, start up my startup, move my maneuver. Another like out of pocket lyric is like, your daughter's supposed to be mine. And that's what showed me like, because, you know, in the beginning, she's like, my son needs a scooter. I'm like, okay, Kehlani doesn't have a son. <laughs> like, who is this about? And then at the end, your daughter's supposed to be mine. I'm like, oh, this is somebody who wanted to get with Kehlani, but at the same time doesn't respect who they are and, you know, the life that they're creating for themselves. Like, some people just feel entitled to other people because, 
you knew them for a long time or like maybe you were friends when you were younger. So I really love the concept of it. Although me being me, I get worried of like, oh no, like you're talking shit about someone in the song. What if they like get mad at you? <laughs> so I think that kind of just shows a, a real not giving a fuck type mentality, which I can admire because I feel like life would be easier if I just didn't give a fuck, but sadly I do, and um, it is what it is. Up next is Wish I Never, which I guess you could say is probably the most toxic song of the album, but it's a big step forward compared to other toxic songs. Wish I Never, what it does is it basically expresses regret. You know what I mean? In the song Wish I Never, Kehlani recognizes where she went wrong and expresses regret in wishing that they never did that, you know, and just did better. I do think that the song was teased a long time ago, a little snippet. There was a video of Kehlani with the red hair, just kind of like dancing to it, like pre it was good until it wasn't. But I couldn't find that video and I, I don't even know what song I'm referencing, but I think it was that. But yeah, I like the song. I feel like it's going to be a breakout hit. I feel like it's going to get lots of play because it's very poppy, upbeat, and I'm sure the ones who want their toxic girly songs will be singing, screaming, lip syncing. Uh, I wish I never did that. <laughs> so just to make people feel like shit. <laughs> Probably the most I've cursed in an episode. Anyway, the end of Wish I Never transitions so beautifully into Up at Night that transition made me like up at night. Because not that I didn't like it. I thought it was all right. But uh, the transition, I just don't know what, what it is. It like adds so much. It's like going from I regret all this dumb stuff. And then it, you hear the filter and like, you wonder why I love you. Okay, maybe I shouldn't sing in this podcast. But you know what I mean? Like that transition is wild. It's vibes. And then I think it's a thematic transition in the album. Going from regretting past mistakes and certain... Um, situationships I guess you know you go from things with the author not working out and then little bay in Miami like oh are you working let's I'm gonna throw some dollar bills at you and you can call me daddy in front of your friends into like I wish I wasn't I wish I never had all that toxic stuff and the toxic person talking in shooter interlude and now up at night this is kind of like the point where it seems like better decisions are being made because now Kaylani is like I'm thinking about you. It's keeping me up at night, but there's love and it, it seems like a better type of love, um, which is cool. I don't really care for Justin Bieber being on the song. <laughs> like, felt like I should say that. For me, it's definitely the context within the album that makes me like the song a lot more. And also I feel like it was giving a little bit like I don't know if this is like accurate, but Chinese vibes with that like flute melody and then like all red on the single artwork. It's just kind of like, hmm, to me, you know, because I think of like the Sonic Unleashed tune on stage having a similar flute. <laughs> like, I don't know, but that's just a thought. So next is Get Me Started. This is an amazing song. This is probably in my top, top half of the album if I had to rank the songs. I really love Sid's feature and the soundscape of the song is really good. I noticed that there's like a whisper tone of voice, which is cool. Very like soft, the whisper, kind of higher pitched, but I like it. And then there's the ascending synth and it just is very nice. Very, very good. Um, but there are background noises that do kind of mess me up because it sounds like there's a door closing in Sid's part. And then it has me like look around like what's going on. But yeah, I mean, very good song. I love the sound of it and how... Lyrically, um, it's kind of Kaylani just being like, all right, like, if this isn't going to work out, go. Like, I'm not going to sit here and beg for you to stay. Like, you need something else. Well, maybe she can do it better. I guess choose peace over stress. Can't clean up your mess. You want to leave, be my guest. Just like, all right, I'm not going to fight for this. Do what you want. If you want to go, then go. And I can really respect that because I think a lot of us... We struggle, I mean, I'm going to speak for myself, I guess. When it, when people struggle with toxic relationships, there's that attachment and you don't want to let go because you're afraid, but it is a little bit healthier, I guess, in a sense to say like, look, if this isn't working out for you, let's not force it. Bye, <laughs> you know, but there is, it is okay to try to make it work with someone that you really have feelings with. And I think in Sid's part, it just kind of shows a little bit more reluctancy of like, 
that's irreversible. Like, you know, are you sure? Thematically a good song. And then after this is the Everything interlude, which is just some strings. It's cool. Um, it adds to the project. It just kind of gives a little breather. And I don't really mind it. I know some people really hate, like, interludes that are just instrumental and, like, skits or whatever. But this one I think is fine. I just let it be. And uh, that is what it is. I mean, I also feel like the Everything interlude kind of shows how important everything is on this album like the song everything being the second to last song you can just tell that that is the climax i guess like the pivotal point that like everything is building up towards everything funny enough so having that interlude really shows the importance of that song but anyway uh, more than i should is next that's a very good song I also feel like this one is going to be a big breakout hit. Maybe it's just me, but I might <laughs> I might have a, a thing for that theme of like having a bad past and then you find someone you really like. You know, it, what got me was the lyric of like the opening line, if you knew how long it'd been since I let somebody in, then you know why I can't look you in the eyes for too long. The song is kind of about that like yearning, I guess, for like something better. Definitely, I feel like has the potential to be a very popular song. Jesse Reyes sounds really good here. This is another good feature. These voices like Jesse Reyes and Sid did a lot more for me than Justin Bieber and Blast. And that's really it. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, I do feel like Jesse and Kehlani sound really similar on the song, though. It's kind of hard for me to tell like, oh, yeah, they they this is Jesse Reyes's part because for some reason it's hard for me to like tell the voices apart melody's really good with the ascending like good morning and good night and i like i like that part i like that melody it really builds into that chorus but i do okay there is the lyrics of like is it really cheating if she's not loving you right blah 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 kind of toxic it's not super toxic but you know what is it with these songs that are like big that i think are going to be big and having those like undertones you know i guess r&b is associated with that kind of stuff but it's whatever. I mean, maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but you know, it seems like you were in a bad relationship and you found someone better. And then you're like, is it even cheating if I'm not getting what I need? And it's like, but you should break up with the first person though. I don't know the story, but that's what I'm gathering from the information. The drums at the end had me like, mm. it reminds me of Igor, the album by Tyler, the creator. There's a transition between the songs, Gone Gone Thank You, into I Don't Love You Anymore. So the beginning of I Don't Love You Anymore by Taylor, the creator, has that like, pum, 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 pum. See, um, a similar drum is heard at the end of More Than I Should, which goes into Alter. So when I hear that, I'm like, yes, because Igor is fresh in my brain. That's an album that is new to me, which I really have been enjoying listening to. So I like that little drum break being very similar. So next is Alter. I've already talked about how I love that song. It makes me a little emotional. The words in it are very nice. There's like imagery given with the like cups of water the little tea lights eating a meal for somebody and i just it's sad but it's still love and the theme of this album was love so i really like that um this is a song that i will really <laughs> sing because i'm more familiar with it because it's been out for a while but i do want to point out there's the waves of water again and i haven't really like listened closely for the water in every song but this is just one that i made a note of that i thought was significant and then there's also the clock ticking. So I guess with the album, there's that theme of water because it's a blue water road. <laughs> water and time, I guess, like spending time with people any given Sunday up at night, which I never, I mean, never kind of relates to time. So it's interesting. And I feel like it was probably intentional to have those themes because water flows like time. Does time flow? I mean, uh, maybe one of the like literary experts of English, I guess, can start decoding that, but I, I like that I found that little connection, you know what I mean? Up next is Melt, and wow, you know, this is a very, very good song, <laughs> despite the lack of uh, power in my voice right now. Reminds me of, like, the Sasha Fierce era Beyonce, which, like, okay, Beyonce and Kehlani, what kind of comparison is that? But listen, there are two songs by Beyonce that came into my brain, Satellite and Disappear, and these aren't really like mainstream famous songs by Beyonce, but these are songs that have that acoustic guitar, powerful vocal, just the sound is very similar. So that came to mind when I was listening to Melt 
and also everything, which I'm going to talk about everything later. Um, but melt, yeah, is like, it really describes emotional intimacy and like physical intimacy of just like melting into somebody. And I think that's beautiful. Although the people who on social media are going to be like, Kehlani only dates her twin eyeball, <laughs> with a little eyeball emoji, like rolling my eyes kind of. Um, they're going to talk their shit with this one, but it's whatever. The song itself is beautiful and it makes me want to experience that. Next is Tangerine. I'll be honest, I I would have Tangerine as my least favorite song of the album, like song song, but I still really like it if that makes sense. This is just like, I feel like Tangerine acts as like a little bit of a calm, cool down track slash transition between Melt and Everything because Melt and Everything are both powerful songs. So yeah, I just feel like Tangerine is a little bit more chillax not that it's not significant but it's just it's just there and then i like the lyric i like the main melody i like from the song is that i can taste me on you mm -hmm. you know i like that <laughs> but yeah like this song literally transitions into everything at the end so it just kind of kalani singing everything everything in different ways also should mention there's like this distorted drum it's it's similar to the drum in the Bojack Horseman theme song with that like it reminds me of a SZA song, but I don't know which one. Tangerine reminds me of anything by SZA. Period. Next is Everything by Kehlani. Wow, it's a really good song. It gave me that same Beyonce vibe, if you know what I'm talking about, with the satellite disappear. But also Ave Maria by Beyonce. It's a good song period. <laughs> I feel like it's it's an ambitious uh, comparison, but I feel like it's valid. And yeah, it's a pen, penultimate song. Everything kind of leads up to this point. Everything is working out. It's the everything for me. Like, happy for her, happy for Kehlani right now. And lastly, we have Wondering slash Wandering. I like that song. It's It feels like a bonus track because of how powerful everything is. Um, I definitely think it's a perfect closer. It features Kaylani's daughter's voice at the end, which is adorable. Like tears are spilling from my face. It's just wow. Um, and it ends with these like waves that transition right back into the beginning of the album. Because I guess it's, you know, you could loop the album, which could kind of say that like this is a this is a cycle in a way which may not be the best connotation given that, you know, the album kind of starts out with a few situationships that didn't really work and then transitioning into finding a true love that works and then you got everything and then wondering, wandering. I feel like I need to look at the lyrics for the song to understand it better because it's like, why have everything be the penultimate song and then you're wondering slash wandering and it brings you back to the beginning. It's about being reassured when you're uncertain. So you're wandering and wondering at the shore. Blue Water Road is the shore that Kehlani is wandering upon. I had to learn to trust and fall, receive it all, surrender. The push and pull to break the wall, rebuild it all, it found me. So I guess within the wandering and wandering, Kehlani has found that the walls crumbled down and you're rebuilding a new foundation that's very stable and healthier and that's the closer of the album which i guess it, i guess the whole like loop from the end into the beginning with the water sounds just kind of shows that this whole thing was a journey <laughs> we were on blue water road the whole time wandering going through everything and i don't know how to describe it it's like going from an unstable place finding that peace and rebuilding and then it brings you back I guess through the wandering, wandering is how Kehlani got there. I don't know if I'm making sense with my words right now, but I guess that's it, really. Like, I just, I don't know. I really like the theme. I really like the story of this album. I love that I can see it. I love that I can feel it. I love that I can relate. <laughs> and I love that this is a very lighter, happier, loving, and fun album. And I love that... It feels like it's for me. <laughs> Ooh, they're going to be being selfish. I know it's not, but like, I just love the fact that I went through a similar thing and that makes this album mean a lot more for me. When we talk about the sounds, we talk about things that I notice. There's a lot of like non-American sounding melodies. Um, I just feel like there are non-standard. Not every song is in a regular, like here's a major, here's a minor. I think there's like 
different modes and stuff used to kind of add some feeling to the song. Um, and I definitely feel like it creates this vibe of spirituality and healing. That's my guess. Like it's unique. It's a new experience compared to the darkness of the past. And I think that's interesting. Am I going to sit here and start, you know, analyzing the songs to tell you what key and what <laughs> modes are used, what scales? No. Now, do I have my degree in music industry studies and a minor in music theory? Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to use that right now? No. I love the track list. There's nothing I would really change about it. I felt the story and, you know, I think I've already said it starts out with the chasing people and having different lovers or whatever, and then it transitions after Wish I Never into the more light love songs and experiencing that truer love, even though more than I should kind of touches upon the like, is it really cheating? And it's like, break up with your shitty ex-partner, like break up, <laughs> break up before you start doing other stuff. Like, come on. But yeah, that's really um, it. And it goes into the more loving songs. And I just love how this album flows. It's really great. And then, yeah, I guess after Alters, that last phase of the album with the true love songs, and it, it just makes sense. And generally, again, there's the violins, the strings, a lot of guitars, but it sounds good. And I like the feeling it brings and it's kind of a step towards a new direction for Kehlani. I'm happy that I'm able to enjoy this project as it came out and I'm not one of those people like it's just not hitting for me. I don't know why. <laughs> and it's like no shame on those people. It just is what it is sometimes and sometimes life it's just not your time to figure it out but it is what it is and maybe again like am I being too deep right now? Is it really that deep? For me it is. And I guess it just brings a certain emotion out of me, but I'm happy and I'm glad. And I'm going to finish this episode off by saying, I think that this album has the potential to finally take Kehlani to the Grammys because this right here is it. I was not kidding around with those Beyonce references. I'm dead ass. And yeah, thanks for listening. I think this is like the most I've cursed in an episode. That's crazy. But um, yeah, I hope uh, people find this episode because they wanted to know other people's opinions about Blue Water Road. And um, yeah, so thanks so much for listening. Follow me on Instagram at Rosary's Room. I don't really post that much. Running social media is exhausting, but it is what it is. I'm gonna try my best. I'm doing my best and I'm living life like don't know how to describe it, but life is lifing. And like I said, like this album really hits because life is lifing. And um, I'm really happy. Once again, despite the tone of my voice, I'm happy. And that's it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being here with me. And have a great day. <laughs> okay, bye.